I want to show you guys a very simple but effective way to rig out a Sony ZV-E1. So as you can see, this is a very run and gun style rig. It's perfect for B-roll. It's perfect for BTS footage. It could also be used as a main A camera. This thing is a beast and with a few simple attachments, you can turn this thing into a nice little run and gun rig. My name is Rusty. This is a channel all about videography, gear, and filmmaking. Cameras and videography has been my passion for a couple years, so I never claimed to be an expert or know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm figuring it out as I go as well. I just share my favorite things I've learned through other creators. I share my favorite gear, what I like, what I don't like. But anyway, let's jump into this rig. The first piece of equipment on this thing to truly start out any rig, whether it's a cinema rig, run a gun rig, is the cage. For the ZV-E1, I went with the Tilta full cage. Um, this thing is absolutely amazing. Plenty of quarter inch thread holes on it. It's got an additional cold shoe. Nice convenient spot to put some NATO rails on the top, Arca Swiss plate at the bottom for easy mounting. Very similar to any other cage that you would get from this camera. Uh, I just like the silver look on this one, so I decided to go with Tilta. The next thing you are gonna want on this run and gun rig is this top handle right here. So this top handle, I don't know the specific name, I will put it in the video and in the description, but it's a small rig. Um, as you can see, you've probably noticed I have a handle, what some would call backwards, but I've learned that running these handles either way, just whatever's comfiest is the way to go. There's no right direction on the handle. As you can see, when I balance the camera like this, I've just got it literally hanging on my thumb. Look how level and balanced the camera is. But when I had the handle turned around the other way, it was very front heavy and just didn't feel comfortable in my hand. But with it like this, it's very easy to maneuver and it's just overall more comfortable in the hand. That's what's nice about this top handle though. You've got a cold shoe here in case you wanted to mount it the other way. You got a cold shoe up here. And then you got a cold shoe in front of that. So there's like, there's like one, another one on this end behind that. There's another one. So there's like five cold shoes on this handle. I have a couple handles. This is by far my favorite one. Also, if any of you guys are returning viewers, I appreciate the love, but you'll notice something different. I got myself an office buddy. That is a snake enclosure. I've got my new buddy Sony in here with me. Yes, I named him Sony, but I'll show you guys some B-roll of him right now as we move on. I do want to add to get this specific top handle onto the cage. You're going to need a NATO rail, but I've literally got a little one inch one on here just to get this top handle on there somehow. Moving on to the next piece of equipment on this thing is this monitor that you see. This is a very budget-friendly monitor. I've got it powered off this GVM battery. You can do it with a V-mount battery or you can just run these batteries. They last a while with this small monitor, but this is called the Port Keys PT6. It comes in at only $180, which is very affordable for a monitor. It's pretty much just a display monitor, but you'll be able to put LUTs on it. It's got two HDMI ins and outs. It's got a USB. It's got a headphone jack on and off switch very good knit display. This thing is absolutely awesome outdoors. And if you're just looking for a better image, not looking to record to a monitor, this is the way to go. So right here, you can see this adapter. This is just a cold shoot, a quarter inch male thread going straight into the monitor. This is the Tilta one specifically that I had already ordered. But the good thing is port key sends you one of their own. So you don't need to buy that attachment I showed you. The monitor, if you go with this monitor, will come with this piece in the box. Moving on to the next piece of gear you are gonna want on this run and gun rig is some type of microphone. So right here, you can see I've got the DJI wireless mic receiver on this end. I've got it clamped in straight to the cold shoe mount on the actual ZV-1, just the way it's rigged up doesn't really fit on the additional cold shoe mount, but I don't need the one on the camera, so I put it into that one. I specifically like these for a run and gun rig just because typically it's gonna be scratch audio, but if not, it can be your main source of audio. You can just have the wireless lav mic receiver with you at all times. If you're filming solo, you just clip it straight onto yourself. I like to carry around the wired lav mic, um, the Rode, and if I'm using it for content for clients, I just clip it right under their shirt have them put the receiver in the pocket and we're good to go. The final piece of gear on this rig is some type of lens. So for a run and gun rig, there's really no specific lens. I would say a 24 to 70 like 
that is on here now. That is a very widely used lens. A lot of people, including myself, rarely take that thing off. On my a7 IV that I'm using now to film this video, I've got my Sigma 16 to 28, which is a very good lens for run and gun if you're doing like vlogging, filming yourself, turning the camera around. You have that 16 millimeter wide angle for yourself, and then you can crunch it into 28 millimeters and get some decent B-roll with it. But anyway, I'll link both of those lenses down below just in case you guys wanna check them out. I have a total of four lenses, and those two are definitely my most commonly used lenses. They're both at a f2.8 aperture. The 16 to 28 is actually internal zoom, so it does not telescope in and out like the 24 to 70 does. So again, another benefit if you're filming yourself with a camera, if you're on a gimbal, you don't have to rebalance, you don't have to worry about the motors working too hard as you zoom in and out, it's just all internal and stays right in one spot. If you have any suggestions for this run and gun rig, something I should do different or add to it, let me know down in the comments. I'm, I love seeing and hearing new rig build outs, um, pieces of equipment I can add to better my rig. Just let me know. If this video brought any knowledge or you just enjoyed it, enjoyed watching it, please hit the thumbs up button on the way out. I would truly appreciate it. I'm trying to make this YouTube thing work. Um, I'm a blue collar boy. I own a service business. I'm trying to transition my work and my hobby and everything over to video. So it'd mean everything if you guys just hit that like button on the way out, support the dream. I appreciate it a bunch and I will see you in the next one.